Hey YouTube, it's Adrian. Just before we get you to this video, do me a favor and head over to pageantlaunch.com. We are starting the world's first dedicated pageant review site, and I would love for you to join our launch team. All you need to do is put in your email address. It's completely free. We are looking to make a pageant industry that is safe, transparent, and fair. I know it's like that most of the time, but over the last year, it's become very evident that it's not like that all of the time. So head over to pageantlaunch.com, put in your email address, and let's get you to this. Hi everybody, I'm Natalie Pavlek, and I am Mrs. Galaxy UK 2020, and this is my interview with The Pageant Project. Hey everyone, I'll say good evening to you. I've got Natalie Pavlek, Mrs. Galaxy UK 2020. Natalie, good evening, how are you? Hi, good evening, yeah, I'm okay, thank you. I'm okay, a little bit stressful getting here. Um, my, well, getting here, I'm sat in my kitchen. Um, my two-year-old was not wanting to go to bed tonight. So yeah, fun. Okay, and I'm sure all the mothers and all the parents can um, can appreciate that. So if Natalie needs to disappear for a sec, we will switch back to a, a placeholder screen, let her do her thing and come back. Um, yeah. We're prepared for everything here. If you're doing the... this, I'm not being rude. I'm looking at the monitor. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I think um, I think everyone can appreciate that. All right, so Natalie, why don't we? It's been a couple of months since I interviewed you, and yeah. a couple of things have changed for you in the pageant world. How have things been for you since Friday the thirteenth of March? Yeah, I mean it's um, it's been strange, hasn't it? I mean, in terms of Friday the thirteenth and the the week of the Galaxy weekend, obviously it was incredible. Um, I was very very blessed um, to have won the title of Mrs Galaxy UK, something that I think you've probably repeatedly heard me say that I worked really really hard for for ten months. And um, we had that incredible Galaxy bubble, um, which I feel so blessed now that we had, and then um, you know back down to earth with a absolutely catastrophic bump on the Monday and, and into this sort of new strange world that we live in. It, it was a very surreal experience coming back from Park Hall where everyone's together and then going back in a week later, we can't go anywhere. Um, you, you did work extremely hard. I mean, at, I know it's very early in your reign and it's a weird start to your reign, but out of everything that you would like people to um, look back at your reign on and appreciate and respect, would the hard work be the part that you're most proud of? Yeah, I think so. I think um, I think when you can go back to a pageant as the first runner-up, there's always a bit of expectation. Because I, if anybody doesn't know, I was the first runner-up um, to Kayleigh Atkinson in 2019, and I think there's always a little bit of expectation um, from you, from the first runner-up. Um, but I think I I knew I was going to apply again. I absolutely love Galaxy, as all Galaxy girls do, um, and so I just decided that if I was going to enter again, I was going to give it my absolute. Effort. Everything and I genuinely did for for the sort of ten months before the pageant, and I guess I'd like to be remembered, yeah, for being really hardworking, but for also, um, you know, for being a mom, for being a, mm. you know, for working full time, and for still sort of balancing um, pageants and working hard in, in pageants um, as well. I think when I set my mind to something, I I find a way to do it. That's a common trait amongst pageant girls, but Galaxy girls in particular. Uh, we already got Hannah Golding saying, I feel you, Natalie, and Shaz Miller saying, completely understand that. So they understand the um, the mother struggles. Uh, I didn't know that mom, you came... Yeah, yeah I, I didn't know that you came first runner-up. That, that means um, that you have something in common with Danielle then, because she... No, she was second runner-up, wasn't she? I, yeah. I've lost my yeah. mind. Yeah, Danielle um, was second runner-up in 2019. That's when we first met, yeah. Right. Uh, and since since that since Friday the thirteenth, um, how has how has life been? How have you been dealing with being stuck in isolation? It's been a very weird start, obviously, <laughs> to your reign. Yeah, I mean it's it's really really hard. I've I've told myself to stop to stop telling people I'm okay because I think. Um, you know, we have a tendency in the world, but also in Britain, we have this sort of stiff upper lip thing going on uh, where we yeah. tell everybody that we're okay. And I'm not okay. Um, it's been really hard. 
it's been a really difficult four and a half weeks. Um, I'm on my own just now. My husband has temporarily moved out because he's a, a doctor. He is right. working in an ITU unit in the hospital, which is a, a COVID unit. And he didn't, he was coming home every night really worried. So he temporarily moved out to try and protect me and my son. So it's just me and my two year old. I'm still working full time. Um, I work for, um, as you know, I have a couple of jobs. My full, my full time job is I work for an animal charity called Blue Cross. And obviously, um, at the minute, we, you know, it, it's a tough time in the charity world as well. So I'm still I'm working fundraising. So I've got a bit of a pressure there that I feel in terms of my full time job. So I'm working full time. I'm trying to look after my son at the same time on my own. No, my husband's in an ITU unit. It, it's it's really hard. How are you? Are you working from home, or are you actually having to leave the house to go to work? No, I'm working from home. So everybody in the UK at the minute, if you're not a key, what they call a key worker, you have to either work from home or they're doing this thing called furlough, which is where the government is paying you, but you're not working. Um, so I'm working from home. I have to say my employers have been absolutely incredible. Blue Cross are a really magical charity and they've been unbelievably supportive. And uh, my manager just is sort of saying, do what you can around your son. But I would say that to work full time from home while looking after a two-year-old is basically impossible. <laughs> you just can't do it. I, I, I don't know how you do it. I mean, I, I've worked with very young kids, probably not quite as young as two, but certainly at, that you don't have much time to yourself. And when they need you, it's always at the most inconvenient time. Um, your, your husband working on the front lines, I mean, without going into all the details, how has he been finding it? I can only imagine it's incredibly difficult. Yeah, it's really hard. He, um, I don't know if my husband is a hero or if my husband is an idiot, to be honest, and I keep saying this to him. Um, he volunteered to go to this, um, into the ITU unit. He was working on a psychiatric ward, and um, yeah, he volunteered to go over there. It's hard, I think, in terms of they, they wear this sort of full protection equipment. It's quite limited. Mm -hmm. There's quite a lot of debate over here in this country right now about um, if the government has provided enough equipment or not. And so, yeah, I think think he's finding it difficult um, he lost his first patient yesterday which is obviously um, unbelievably difficult um, and he's away from me and his son I think it's yeah it's really really difficult for him as well and I think I have to keep remembering it's really difficult for him as well when Reggie's like having a tantrum on the floor and I'm on my own and I'm like but I, I just have to remember what he's dealing with. I mean, you said you don't know if he's an idiot or a hero. He he may yeah. be a bit of both. I mean, so he he does, I guess yeah. as a doctor, he he wanted to save lives. Obviously, that's why you go into that profession. So, he's yeah. um, I mean, you must be proud of him, if nothing else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, no, I'm really, I'm really, I'm really, really proud of him. Um, and I'm sure you know when this is over and we look back, we'll think, wow. But um. You know, it, it, I do worry as well because there's an awful lot of healthcare workers in this country right now that are getting really ill with it. Um, there's a yeah. lot of healthcare workers that have, that have died now. And I think, you know, putting yourself in that position, I, I think it's kind of similar to firemen, isn't it? Like the firefighters that run yeah. into the, the burning buildings. Um, they definitely, yeah, I'm really, I am really, really proud of it. Yeah, it's, it's got to be com, com very, very difficult. So I do feel for you, especially coming down from the Galaxy weekend to this. It's, it's, an, it's an awful way to crash land. Have you been able to do anything with your reign um, since, since Galaxy? I mean, no one really has been able to do anything. We can't do appearances, obviously. But have you been able to do anything, plan anything for when this is over? Honestly, not hugely. Um, it... it... It was amazing to have the bubble and I had all of these amazing plans of what I was going to do. I was intending to take a couple of weeks off um, from mm. the gym, from the healthy eating, from this, the whole bubble to sort of relax and then to like burst out and keep going again. But, um, you know, my focus really, really has to be at the minute, my son and my husband were just supporting him how I can. So I, it, it's really difficult as well for me as somebody, you know, that was that's so sort of dedicated to pageants and has, has been working so hard to get this title to now not be able to yeah. do anything with it. Um, but I also just have to accept that at the minute, um, it's not happening for me. I have to prioritise my son. Um, you know, even this, this is, I mean, how long has it taken me? It's taken me four and a half weeks. You've done everybody else to schedule this interview. Um, and, there's, you know, there's other people that I've been putting off um, that, are, you know, just trying to fit in as well. But um, yeah. there'll be, you know, there's, there's ideas and, pla and there's plans, but I think I really just need to get through this at the minute. 
I think everyone can can understand you putting your your son and family first. I don't think any of the other queens that I've interviewed have um, the, the the galaxy queens have any family commitments. I'm just making sure I'm I'm yeah, not just no. talking stuff. <laughs> So I think everyone will understand. I certainly understand. Uh, Megan Goldberger has said, my best friend, with a lot oh, of exclamation Ma marks. Love Maggie G. Uh, Natalie, why don't we go back to the, um, at least in our heads, go back to the Galaxy Weekend for a sec, maybe happier ah. times. Can you talk us yeah. through when your name wasn't called? Because if you don't know, in Galaxy... Oh when your name isn't called, they call out the first runner-up. So when your name isn't called, that means you've won. Take us through the emotions you were feeling at that time. Oh my goodness, that was an insane moment. So it was myself and Dion, and um, Dion had been in the competition the year before as well. So I, I met Dion and um, you know seen her throughout the year on on the build up to it. Um, so it's always I think it's even more special to be standing there in that moment with somebody that you know and that you've got to know. Um, and obviously coming from 2019, when I heard my name um, called out as the yeah. first runner up, I sort of knew what that feeling was like. And you are. It's it's sort of the str it must be the strangest moment in pageantry when you're literally thinking don't say my name don't say my name don't say my name and then you hear your name and you are so ecstatic to come second because obviously that's amazing and mm. you're so ecstatic for the person opposite you you know in my case that was Kaylee and I knew how hard she'd worked and I knew what impact it would have for her to to win a title um, but you're still heartbroken inside but you're on stage and you've got to hold it together and you've got to you know you've got you you've got to keep yeah. you know your, your positivity on um and so I was just standing there thinking oh gosh oh gosh I know how that feels I know how that feels and I felt myself welling up and I could I, I, I could feel the tears coming and Dion actually said to me afterwards I could see that you were about to start crying and I said yeah it's because I, I, I remembered how it felt oh no um, it is, yeah, it was so surreal. And then I think I was just in a bit of shock, to be honest. Like, I watched my the winning moment a few times, and I think, I wish I'd done, like, Danielle went like that, and Danielle's got brilliant pictures of her doing this, and I'm just sort of standing there, like, this. Like, I think I was in so much shock. I really wish that I had, yeah, done something a bit more dramatic. <laughs> I, I've seen, um, I, I've watched a, a couple of times that winning moment, and I seem to remember when you were, right before they called out the first runner-up name, I seem to remember you and Dion being there, and you were talking, I think, to her, or she, you, you were saying something to her. Do you remember what you were saying at that moment? Yeah, I, I think I was saying, because I knew that Dion had, Dion had told me in the run-up to it that she was aiming to get in the top five and that she was going to be really happy if she made the top five. And so the fact that the two of us were standing there at the end, I think we were so happy for each other. And I think we mm. were just literally saying to each other, you've done amazing. Oh my goodness, you've done amazing. I can't believe, well done, well done. I think that was probably it. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you're smiling about it now, but I can tell you the look on your face when you were actually there, you did look quite stressed out. You, you looked like you were about to have some sort of panic attack. Yeah, yeah, I was. I was like, hold the tears back, hold the tears back. Yeah, I wonder if Dion remembers, though. I'll have to ask her. <laughs> uh, well, Dion John has said you are an amazing lady. Uh, oh. Sh Shaz Miller has said what a beautiful person. And Danielle, mm -hmm. of course, is watching. She's... Um, I'm not, she's jokingly not liking the fact that Megan has said that you're her best friend. <laughs> uh, Dan yeah, Danielle introduced uh, us. <laughs> Shaz, well, that's not fair. Maggie, Maggie G is everyone's best friend. Shaz Miller has also said, well-deserved, hard Thank work you. pays off. So, Thank you. I'm so excited. Well, Shaz has entered for next year, and I'm so excited um, to see what she's going to do with a full year. So has it sunk in yet, the fact that you have that crown on your head and that your sash has gone um, from purple to white? Yeah, I think it has. But it's also, with this whole situation that we're in, it's also really difficult, like I said before, to know how hard I worked for it and to know the plans that I had for it are now on hold, I think has kind of dampened it a little bit. But yes, it. Um, I think it has sunk in that, my hard, that the hard work paid off. And look, it's so pretty. It's sitting on your head super well. Um, I've got Hannah Golding saying, I was crying when it was top two. I know you both work so hard and I love you both. Yeah, because Hannah did interview training with both of us. So I guess in that moment she was like, yeah, my girl. 
old. <laughs> It's difficult when you have the the final two and you you know and you like both of them and it's a weird feeling because you don't really mind who wins but obviously there's a big yeah. difference between first runner up and and winner as you would know. Uh, so Natalie, what um what sort of plans do you have once the whole Corona thing is done? What sort of plans do you have for the rest of your reign whenever that is? So I'm really um, passionate about, and you know, m my platform throughout the last year has been changing pageant perceptions, and I'm really, mm. really passionate about getting more married women and more women with children into pageants. So, um, and I know Danielle and I have talked about this as well, and actually all the queens, we've all talked about it a little bit, how we'd, we'd like to get more people to enter Galaxy. We want to get more people mm. to get to the weekend and to have the amazing experience that we've all had and to get all the amazing benefits that we've had from it. I mean, for the, the last sort of month and month while we've been in lockdown um, yeah. and been in isolation, I can honestly say that the pageant community has kept me going. You know, Megan Goldberg's mm. quiz twice a week has been incredible you know the house party chats the whatsapp groups there's this amazing um i don't know if you heard about it this amazon wish list pageant group i don't know if anybody's have, told you I about have, this yeah i have heard of that i was on um house party i was so confused with house party because i downloaded the app i looked at it when i don't know what this means and then lauren was saying everyone's being hacked get off it get off it so i deleted my account and then suddenly everyone's back on it and then yeah. i was on on the app with lauren and the crew and they were talking about this amazon wish list and they're all putting in the stuff that they want and apparently um just random people i don't know what the group is i am not in the group but apparently people can just buy you things whatever you want including tim tams um are you in that group as well i am so this morning i got um a gift from meggy g thank you and a gift from a lady that i don't know um and yeah it's amazing and it's really addictive so i think i've sent about 16 or 17 gifts now because you sit and you go through everybody's lists and then you're like oh i'm gonna oh, send wow. them that oh i'm gonna send them that um and it's really nice and positive so yeah i think you know the, the pageant community really has been a, a a positive light in my four difficult weeks um, of this yeah, lockdown, sure. and I think that just further kind of cements the message that I want to get out there um, to to especially married women and women with children to say, you know, there's so many positives you can gain from pageantry. Give it a go. Come and join us. Yeah. Um, can someone who's watching please add me to that group if I'm allowed? Because I just want to, I want to see what everyone's asking for. Uh, Natalie, you said you got like 16 or 17 things. Can you give us an idea what sort of things you've gotten? Because I've seen all sorts of things from, yeah. as I said, Tim Tams to bottles of gin to every, everything else. So what sort of things have you been gifted? So I've only been gifted two things so far. But, and I got um, right. a face mask and, oh, my God, I can't believe I'm going to say this Um I've, some spot patches, Adrian, because I've, I've got a bit, a bit of hormonal spottage going on at the minute, which you can't see because I've got a lot of makeup on. Uh, but spot patches, they were on my list. Um, but other people, I've kind of been going through people's lists and thinking, oh, yeah, I'd really like that. So I sent a girl, um, she had on her list a Buzz Lightyear figure for her son. And I loved it. Oh. So I was like, oh, he's got to have that. Um, and then, yeah, so it just tends to be, I like to go through people's lists and see things that I would like. So probably a lot of skincare and a lot of sweets as well. <laughs> I, 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 will the sweets help with the spotting? I can't think that they will. <laughs> but that's all right. Um, I know. They, might add, they might actually be adding to it, to be honest. <laughs> I was going to say, the, um, well, Kay Pritchard has said, well done, Natalie, with two X's. And Hannah Golding has said, it's so nice to be able to make people smile and also to get a cute something. Natalie's gift came when the diva was being a diva. What? Yeah. I sent Hannah some lip gloss that she had on her list, mainly because I wanted to know if it worked or not, because it's one of these like plumping ones. Not mainly, that's awful, Hannah, because I also wanted to send you a gift, but um, that particular gift, because I wanted to know if it works or not. And Hannah says it does. So I think I'm going to have that to my list. Okay, so what else? So you've got the, the spot, the things. Sorry, I don't know what they are, but the things. <laughs> what, what else have you got? Because I remember you saying that you're obsessed with skincare. So is most of the list skincare items? You know what? It's actually not really. This is going to sound awful, but I don't hugely get my skincare from Amazon. Um, mm, I, I can I, understand I, that. 
I'm a bit of a skincare snob. I really enjoy reading about skincare. Um, there's yeah. quite a few really great skincare dedicated websites, and I like to go on and read the reviews and read the, the ingredients lists and stuff like that. Yep. But Amazon's great for things like face masks, sheet masks, and face washes and cleansers. Um, so I, if I see them on people's lists, I tend to buy them. I think maybe on my lists um, at the minute is probably mainly stuff for Reggie because I'm like, Anything I can get at the minute that might occupy him for five minutes will be a godsend. <laughs> oh, is it toys and like Buzz yeah. Lightyear and things like that? That yeah. makes sense. Yeah, flashcards or I, yeah. In fact, you know what? I'll tell, I can't even, I'm, I'm saying that and I can't even remember what is on my list, but it's just so fun <laughs> because you're just going through and adding them and you're looking at other, it's honestly, it's so lovely. Um, oh, Harry, the top one on my list is Harry Bow, um, and then yeah, then there is kids flashcards, um, or oh, a makeup organizer, an eyeliner, Peppa Pig teapot set. Oh, <laughs> and then yeah, and then this is on my list. I thought like if people went into my list and they saw it, I thought it might make them laugh. Um, but it is Woof and Brew Windy Hound supplement for farty dogs. Do you so, actually need that, or do you, or you just put it there? Desperately do need it. So if anyone can see it, that is on my list. Um, if anybody wants that to, like to a... buy me that, so you put what? it on your, you put it on your dog's food, and it's supposed to stop them farting. I have a French bulldog that makes some incredible smells. Uh, I, I I don't know. I, are you sure that's healthy? Like I can't imagine quite how it stops a dog from farting. It's not going to make it worse, is it? I, know, I feel like it's worth a try right now. We're in lockdown. We're quarantined. It's getting oh, worse. Yes. <laughs> Okay. Uh, Bethany Blissett has said, "Hey Adrian. Hey Sister Queenie with three love hearts." Hey, and Hannah has <laughs> said, "Sweets will help with the stress." So that's true. That's my child, aka the yeah. diva lol. Uh, Dion has said the group is amazing. Gifting is so addictive. She said she yeah. loves you too, Hannah. And Hannah Golding has put hashtag no more Peppa Pig. Well, so there's you, a, someone's had enough of Peppa Pig. I, I, I have a young nephew and he watches Peppa Pig and I, I don't understand it. I don't understand that. I don't understand the wiggles. I don't understand. Uh, SpongeBob SquarePants. I, I don't know. I don't. Oh, that, that'd be Sponge all right. He confuses me. I don't understand. He's a sponge. But uh, anyway, um, so can someone please, in all honesty, add me to the group because I really want to have a look. Uh, so apart from the, the farting dog stuff and the skin stuff, I remember that you're saying that you're obsessed with the skin care. So before anyone else asks, do you have any tips for skin care? Because I've been thinking about this only because I have a, a tub of stuff that I'm running out of and um, I, I've been asking people. So... What tips do you have for skincare? Oh, you know, um, Jessica Barkley has asked me to go on her podcast and do a whole episode on skincare. I should say that I am in no way trained. I am not medical. I have no training. I just really, really like skincare. I read a lot of groups, a lot of posts like I say mm. a lot of reviews um I'd say um one of my number one tips would be I'm, a, I'm a, on a Facebook Facebook group um from this skincare expert called Caroline Hyrons and she has a skincare group called the skincare freaks and there's about 30,000 people in this group and if you That's have a, a skincare freaks. question and you write it on there they will tell you the answer um but I would say in the basics I would say of skincare is wash your face girls if you are using wipes you need to throw them away immediately not only are they horrific for the environment but you shouldn't be just like moving the dirt around your face you need to wash your face properly um so that would be my number one um and then spf which is always i think a bit um one that people especially i bet in australia you're all for it but in the uk i don't mm. think very many people wear spf on a daily basis um so i would say my number my two things would be wash your face properly with water not a dirty white and spf right okay all right that that sounds like something that i can manage because i was completely asking for myself that i, I don't care about <laughs> anyone else so I have this friend who's absolutely similarly to you. She knows she's like a walking encyclopedia when it comes to all things makeup, but skincare, she's like you, she obsesses about what's in it. It obsesses in a good way. And she knows yeah. what all the ingredients are. And she looks for the ones that are natural and you, she doesn't want to put chemicals on her face. And I just ask yeah. her anything and the knowledge that she has, it just, I mean, I'm listening to, it, I don't understand any of it, 
but it still sounds very, very impressive. Yeah. Uh, I should Ruth... say that there's some chemicals that are really good for your skin, and I know that um, yeah. some people don't like that, but um, if for, for the older women, you know, if you're 30 plus, you really want to look into getting yourself a retinol. So a retinol is like the only scientific product um, that has been proved to genuinely make a difference to skin um, in terms of anti-aging and pigmentation okay. and loads of things. So women over the age of 30, get yourself a retinol. And if you want recommendations, message me <laughs> can i use it too yes you can 100 percent. anybody yes retinol that's what you need to get into your routine okay I, i'm going to look into that as soon as i finish this interview because um <laughs> I, I, i'm over 30 i'm not a woman but i am over 30 uh ruth fleming has said my best neighbor so great to see you from a distance thank you for your continued support to the hygiene bank along with the donations from all your pageant friends can you tell us a bit about the hygiene bank because it sounds like we have something similar here what's the hygiene bank over there Thank you. So that's my amazing neighbour, Ruth, who lives opposite me, and she's an absolute godsend. Um, so, yes, so the Hygiene Bank um, is like a nationwide charity, but it has local branches. Um, mm -hmm. And basically, it's to combat hygiene poverty, which is something that I'm also really passionate about. Um, for Galaxy last year, I um, started learning a bit about period poverty, and I collected over 6,000 sanitary products that I donated. Wow. From that, it developed a bit further into um, not just period poverty, but hygiene poverty. So um, the Hygiene Bank runs similar to a food bank. Um, mm -hmm. And like I say, it's a national organization, but it has it needs local people to run them. And Ruth and I um, realized that the closest one to where we live in Chester um, is in the city of Liverpool, which is, you know, a good 40, right. 45 minutes away. So Ruth yeah. um, got in contact with the Hygiene Bank and set it up in this area. And I've been helping with her, helping her to get it set up. Um, my gym put in a collection point and I got some press around it as Amazing. well. So basically, it's like a food bank and um, the general public can donate and it's any type of hygiene product, soap, sanitary products, toothpaste, moisturizer, deodorants, right. anything. And then we work through the hygiene bank and with local authorities and charities to get those products to the people that need it the most because... Um, it's really alien, if you don't know about it, to think that there is people out there that cannot afford to buy soap, cannot afford to buy products to keep themselves clean, or they're deciding yeah. whether they should buy food or they should buy products to keep themselves clean. So it's 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 yeah. shocking in this day and age that that should be a thing, but it is. And so the hygiene bank is, is kind of just trying to to help that a bit. And yes, I did a collection as well. And, um, you know, so many lovely pageant girls gave us donations um, towards that as well. The one I, I saw someone's post and the comparison that really got me was some uh, young mothers maybe being homeless on the street or being a, 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 below the poverty line, having to make that decision between whether they feed themselves or get um, sanitary products. And to yeah. put that in perspective, I mean, that that's not a choice anyone should have to make. Um, Ruth, that, that sounds amazing. Can you, um, I'm talking to Ruth here, can you put a link in the comments or message me, Ruth? Because I would love to get some more information about that um, and give it some give it some publicity for you. Uh, Hannah Golding has said, yeah, we can deal with SpongeBob. And Shaz Miller has said, I want to be added to the group too. It looks like fun. Has anyone added, I'm actually checking my Facebook now. No one has added me to this group. Am I not allowed in there? If I'm not allowed in this group, <laughs> You just let me know well someone add me to the group or none of you who are watching none of you are in this group and i've just spilled the beans on this amazing group <laughs> maybe that's what we should have said anything. if you're not added by the time we come off i will add you straight away and you and you shaz as well please <laughs> uh, i want to get in on on the fun and now sarah blissett has asked hi how do you rate the ordinary skincare range I love the Ordinary Skincare range. So um, they do a really budget-friendly range of genuine um, products. Um, with the Ordinary, though, what you have to do, it can be a little bit difficult to navigate because they do sort of um, singular products. So they'll have like a hyaluronic acid on its own um, or a salicylic acid or a lactic acid all on their own, whereas... Right. Um, in general, when you're buying products, sorry, is this going into way too much detail at the minute? No, um, no I'm, I'm fascinated. But lactic acid for me is normally what's ca causing me pain after leg day. So you're saying it's in a skincare range? 
Yeah, it's a really good exfoliator. So, and salicylic acid is really good for spots. I'm, I'm using that myself at the minute. So um, basically the ordinary is a really sort of budget friendly, great way into skincare of sort of learning more about right. the ingredients of skincare um, and what, what, it, what genuinely is in skincare. So when you start to look at other stuff now, um, now I've said just the, even those few things, hyaluronic acid is probably one of the most common ingredients that you'll find in any sort of hydrating skincare product. Um, right. So yes, really, I love the ordinary. If you want to know any, I've tried most, like most of their products. If you want to know anything specific, message me because, like I say, I'm really always happy to talk about um, skincare. And you can also get the ordinary on like ASOS. Um, so if you have like an ASOS um, delivery membership, like I do, anyway, um, you can you know order through, through there. It's really accessible. Oh wow. Right. Sorry, okay. you can um, tell when I really like something, I'll just keep talking about it. <laughs> well, I, I'm finding this fascinating because it's like all this stuff that I have no idea. Like I understand the words, but it's kind of my brain's not quite dealing with it. So, guys, if you have any skincare questions, it looks like <laughs> Natalie will be more than happy to answer this. I mean, we cover the important stuff with the crown and, you know, not much is happening with Corona. So if you have any skincare questions, like Hannah Golding has put Google's best over 30 skincare now. That, that's what I'm going to do, okay. Hannah, as well. <laughs> uh, so Danielle has added added me now i think to the the group has she there you go i'm now part of the group yay um shaz miller has said thanks megan goldberg said we'll get you in it done fab thank you yeah uh, hannah golding has said no i can't spend more on is it asos or asos i've heard asos is it asos is it asos asos i don't know you know asos asos probably i don't know if they want to say asos <laughs> I, I've heard ASOS. I don't know. I, I don't. I've never been there. But Hannah has said no. I can't spend more on ASOS. I uh, Miss uh, Danielle has said we are just going to be chatting about skincare at internationals. Danielle knows a lot as well about um, skincare. Yeah. Uh, and Ruth Fleming has put the link to the hygiene bank. Thank you, Ruth. Uh, we do have something similar here in Australia, but I get the feeling that um, sanit well, hygiene poverty is not quite as big a deal as. Um, over here as it is in the uk obviously it's still a problem though uh megan has asked when can i come visit for that facial oh yes i know i i'm so i feel really gutted for everybody i had an amazing sponsor for galaxy a skincare clinic in chester called dd clinical obviously mm -hmm. the absolute ideal sponsor for me i was over the moon and i went in for six months on the run-up getting various different treatments um different facials and they gave me for the final vouchers for a free facial to give out um at the final to contestants and to put on the tables um but it had an expiry date. I think it was the end of April, and obviously no one's going to get to use them now, so that's such a shame. Um, but, Megan, you, you're welcome in my house anytime. I, I remember seeing you handing out those um, those the little things, and everyone was going yeah. mental over it. Everyone was – I mean, people give out a lot of stuff, but everyone was making a beeline for those facials. Is it actually a facial? Yeah. Yes, it's a facial. Like, oh, my God. Um, are, are they – I imagine that clinic can't operate at the moment, can it? No, no, nothing's operating in the UK at the minute. <laughs> yeah. Um, it might be worth, Megan or Natalie, even if, you know, maybe giving them a call anyway and seeing, because a lot of these businesses are going to need, obviously, support when all this stuff is over. So it might be just worth so um, phoning yeah. them yeah, I and seeing if you can that. organize something, because um, it's going to be over at some point, and then all these small businesses will need our support. Ariana Neo has said, love it. And she said, OMG, yes, facials. I feel I feel we should just have you on and do like a, not a makeup thing, but a, um, a skincare, a skincare lecture on how to look after your skin. Um, Natalie, you've mentioned that one of the most important things for you was representing, I guess, mothers. Um, because obviously when you're a mother in pageantry, you have other things or other young people, little people that need attention. So um, how have you found the, the pageantry has, um, has fitted in with mother life and also your life as a mother? Because I think that's not something that we've really talked about much. 
Yeah, it's 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 a been in you know, pageantry's been amazing. So my son is two and a half, um, mm. and after he was born, we had a really sort of difficult six or seven months with his sleeping. So he basically didn't sleep for more than about an hour and a half, two hours in a row for about mm. seven months. Um, I was exclusively breastfeeding at the time, so I was just up constantly, um, absolutely exhausted. I mean, it was unbelievably difficult and draining for, for my husband um, and I at the time. And when I look mm. back now, I, I don't really know how we got through it, but but we did. Um, but what it kind of what it I think what it can do when you become a new mother is it can kind it can isolate you a bit. So you're not yeah. you're no longer doing the things that you used to do. Um, you know, you're not just going out for a drink with your friends. You're not just randomly going out for a meal with your friends, going to the cinema. You know, be, becoming a mother you know, just changes all of that. Um, yeah. So when I found pageantry, I when I entered Galaxy last year, which was sort of in the January time, when my son was sort of um, a year and a couple of months, mm. I really didn't have a social life anymore. Um, my social life was kind of gone. I was lucky that I'd met a group of friends through sort of antenatal classes and we would meet up with the babies. But apart from that, my social life and my time with me had, had gone. Um, yeah. And then I discovered pageantry and it opened up this entire world, this entire new social life for me. Um, and you like you could be out with pageantry every Friday, every Saturday. You know, it, it really does open a huge window of, of, um, of, this world, you know, of like-minded women who yeah. are welcoming and want to be your friends. So, you know, when I would go to a lot of appearances on my own to start with, then you'd just start meeting people and you'd just start chatting and then you'd share a lift. And, um, you know, I, I gave um, Louise Parkinson, Lauren's mum, a lift to an event because they don't live too far away from me. I've never met Mm -hmm. but that's how you start meeting people and you um, and then you know i've just had an amazing social life this 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 last year and it, that in turn obviously is a really really big effect on your mental health and and i just i'm yeah. so passionate about promoting that to to women with children you know you can still focus on yourself your little person is your whole world but that doesn't mean you still shouldn't have a bit of time for you where you pamper yourself you put on a nice outfit you go out and you do something just for you that's good that's still fine and and pageantry made made me do that to start with made me mm. you know there would be times when i'd be like oh i shouldn't i should just stay in no get get re get dressed get ready get out there um and yeah that's the kind of message that i want to get out there to to mums I mean, it's incredibly important to, to carve out some time for yourself. I know for for young mothers or mothers in general, that guilt is a huge problem because you're always wondering, are you doing enough of this? Are you doing enough of that? Oh, if I'm doing well in one area, I'm failing in another area. So yeah. is, it, is it fair to say that the, the pageantry and meeting that community, especially in the UK, was really a big benefit to you? And it would have helped you be a better mother as well because you would have been in a better yeah. spot emotionally. That's exactly it. That's that's a really nice, succinct way of putting it. That's exactly it. Um, and I think as well, it's also really important that you're raising a young person and you want to raise them to follow their dreams, to believe in themselves, to put themselves out of their comfort zones. And I think as a parent, you need to do that as well, because you have to kind of, um, you, know, yeah. you have to live by example to your child. So, um, yeah. You know, even at just at this age, you know, I'm telling my son that I, you know, look what mommy's done. I look what I've achieved. This was my dream. This is what I worked hard for. You know, I, I don't think you can start, start young enough on that. You know, I, I want him to whatever he wants to do in his life. I want him to go out and try and do it. Absolutely. Uh, now, Anne Seaborn has said, I need a skincare product that makes me look 10 years younger. <laughs> um, that's my, that's my um, Auntie Anne or Jamie's Auntie Anne, my Auntie Anne now. And Anne okay. was at the, my Auntie Anne was at the Galaxy final. Thank you, Anne. <laughs> Any recommendations for her or is 10 years too much? She, al she already looks incredible. Like, she already looks insane. You would never know how old Anne is, so she's just lying there. Okay. All right. Because I was going to say probably good genetics, but I don't know if they uh, they've put that in a skincare product yet. <laughs> Hannah Hannah Golding has said, "How sad is this that I'm actually happy to hear about the lack of sleep because everyone else says their baby slept all night and I was there with the two hours. Like, what? Okay. 
This is uh, one of the things. This is one of the things that often happens in my interviews. Whenever anyone says they had this sort of problem that they felt alone with, there's always someone who jumps in the comments and says, "Oh my God, I have that exact same problem." Whether it's being a mother with a child that won't sleep or weird phobia, there's always someone else who um, has your exact same problem. So you're not alone. Uh, yep. Shaz Miller has said, "What a great message to you as well, with a love heart." Oh, um, thank you. So, Natalie, what kind of what's next for you once once lockdown is over and life returns back to normal? What are you, I guess, most looking forward to? Uh, but this is really, really awful, and I hope no one plays this back to my son um, when he's older. <laughs> I'm I'm going away somewhere on my own. Like I know I'm coming out of lockdown, but I am I'm going to go see Megan. I'm going to go see Danielle. I'm going somewhere on my own. <laughs> I think we can understand that. Um, yeah, but seriously, after that, it'll be, um, hopefully we'll find out when the internationals are going to be. Obviously, that's just really up in the air at the minute, October, fingers crossed. Yeah. But I think, you know, I, I, I'm doubtful whether sort of international travel around the world will be open by then. Um, but we'll find out when internationals is and then we'll start focusing on that as well and um, start really working hard out in the UK pageant community. Again, I want to... Um, you know, really, as soon as the world is open again, I want to hit the ground running, mm. get myself out to events. Um, I'd like to experience judging as well. So if anybody wants me to um, judge a pageant when we're back open, I'd like to see what it feels like to be on the other side. Oh, I am as well. I should say, Adrian, that's a perfect chance. I am judging the UK's first virtual um beauty pageant it's called Miss Virtual um, and it is running at the minute and um, it's being run by a, a, a wonderful lady called Vivian who's in the pageant community over here mm -hmm. and there's loads of other people that have volunteered their time and it's all not for profit it's all just for fun and and um, it's called Miss Virtual I think it's 21st so you've got five days to get your entries in and i think you send a video of yourself in evening wear and i think it's fashion wear and then there is myself jasmine foley who is mrs island galaxy from last year mm -hmm. and a few other judges to be announced as well so um pageant community get out there that'll give you something to do if you're at home at the minute to get yourself nice and dressed up um as well uh, guys, again, if anyone knows, um, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, Nat, what, what the link for that is or anything like that, then do let me know because I'm, I'm happy to give that some publicity because I think a lot of people are maybe struggling at the moment being stuck inside all the time, obviously, such as yourself, um, although you, you've got it even worse, obviously, with the child. But a lot of people are needing an excuse to glam up and just to do something because everyone's stuck at home doing nothing yeah. and they're not dealing well with it because it's incredibly tough. So if anyone knows an Instagram account or a link for um, Miss Virtual, do let me know, and I will, um, or Nat, if you can find it there. Yes, I'm so you see me sneakily uh, looking there on my phone. Yeah. Um, yeah, go for it. If I can't find it now, I will. I'll, I'll send it to you. Yeah, because it's a, it's a really great chance for people um, to enter. Absolutely. And I do love how the pageant community is being really positive and um, being very innovative a lot of the time um, whilst we're in lockdown, just to see that they're maintaining their positivity and trying to keep everyone else going. It's uh, it's amazing. Um, Shaz, uh, sorry, Megan Goldberger has said we're having a girls' night in. Danielle has said come stay with me in London. Claire Beebe has said we need a girly weekend in the lakes too. And Elimia Zisha has said hey with XXX. Ellie, I hey, hope that, I pronounce your name correctly. That's Ellie, that's um, <laughs> Junior Miss Galaxy. Yeah, I've, I've interviewed all of you now. As you said, yeah. you were the last piece of the puzzle. So I've got the whole, what is it, four, five? I forget, I, I can't remember. It's five. Yeah. Uh, and funnily enough, Ellie, your name wasn't the longest, amazingly. We, uh, Chloe Lake gave me a former Mrs. Galaxy whose name, just first name and surname, was 25 characters long. Wow. So, I, I can't remember who it is. I wasn't familiar with her, but 25 characters. So um, there you go. A bit of trivia for you. Uh, Kay Pritchard has said, I'm looking forward to meeting up for a meal with you, Jamie, Aww. and the other NHS colleagues, XX. Oh, thank you, Kay. That's Kay, um, one of my husband's friends who, who works um, in the same hospital as my husband. Stay safe and well, Kay. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you guys are all doing an amazing job. 
Okay, so Natalie, let's go through the final 10. I can't remember what your answers were last time. I don't know if you can, but we, <laughs> no. we might as well go through them again. No, neither do I. So we'll treat it like a first time and then um, let you get back to whatever it is you're doing. What time is it for you guys over in the UK? It's, um, my brain is it's, ten, it's almost perfect. 10. It's, it's, ten, it's 10 to 10 at night. And literally my bedtime these days is 10 o'clock. I need to be like getting in bed 10, quarter past 10. <laughs> Sounds perfect to me. All right, let's go through these final 10. Guys, any final questions or messages for Natalie? Put them in, and then I'll circle back to them once we're done with the final 10. But Natalie, the first question is, what is your favorite word? Um, love. And, and just, these are not rapid fire. I feel like I need to tell this to everyone after Danielle's first attempt, where she thought this was rapid fire. It's not, you can take your time. If you want to answer quickly, you can. Question two is, what is your least favorite word? Oh man, it should be hate, shouldn't it? But it's probably United because um, we actually haven't talked about football, have we, on this one? That's pretty much what we talked about last time. But United would be uh, my football team titles. Now, okay. Now, yesterday <laughs> I was rewatching our interview, and now I'm remembering. Yes, United was your answer, and I rem I know what the answers are for the next two, because the question three was what turns you on, and that was your uh, Man City playing well, and then what turned you off was either Man City not playing well, or basically Manchester United turns you off. So are those still locked yeah. in as the answers? Um, do you know what? Probably or um. <laughs> Um, although I have to say what turns me on right now is literally a night on my own um, <laughs> with just, just peace and quiet, watching whatever I like, just sitting, in fact, not a night, a week on my own. Yeah. I, I can imagine. For a second, I thought you were going to say the Amazon wish list is what turns you on because that's <laughs> yeah. nearly at the moment. That's what I'm looking forward to looking at once I get off this interview. Uh, no, we haven't, but I imagine football is closed at the moment, right, in the UK because all the sports here have ground to a halt. Yeah, yeah it's, football, all sport here is, is closed and um, they haven't announced yet what they're going to do with the end of the season. Um, it's yeah. a bit controversial because I don't know if you know too much about the Premier League at the minute, but um, there was a, no. a team called Liverpool who are top of the league by 21 points, I think. And um, they haven't won the league in... They've never won the Premier League, I don't think. There's probably a Liverpool fan that will jump on. I don't think they've ever won the Premier League. Um, we're in second place, so they're 20-something points ahead. So if the season had continued, they would win the league. But there's a good yeah. chance the season won't continue now. And I have to say that... Do, do you know what? It's probably that that turns me on. <laughs> the idea that they won't win the league. <laughs> So they won't win even though they were 20-something points ahead? If you can't finish the games, how can you finish the season? I feel that you might answer differently if your team was 20 points ahead, but we'll leave that for the hypotheticals. <laughs> so I love how you guys are so passionate about football. I don't think we have anything in Australia that get, that get people so worked up about it. Uh, I'm remembering all the football talk we had last time, and this time it's all been about skincare, so we're doing well. Um, question five, then, is what sound or noise do you love? Um I still love the sound of my son laughing. I think that was probably my answer last time as well. That's the, particularly now as well, laughing is good. It's much preferable to crying. So, I mean, the next question is what sound or noise do you hate? Is it the crying? Um, at the minute, it's probably, do you know what? It's, it's, my, it's, it's a good and a bad thing. My son's in that really sort of chatterbox um, stage where he's really inquisitive. And at the minute, everything is, what's that? What's that? What's that? Oh. What's that? And if he doesn't like your answer, he just asks you again. So he pointed at an electricity pole today and he said, what's that? And I said, and it's electricity pole. What's that? It's a pole. And if you look at the top, there's wires that come out of it that, that brings electricity. <laughs> what's that? So it, the what's that will just continue until he's satisfied. I thought it was the why stage. I thought it would be what's that, an electricity pole. Why? And then it's, why? It's and not then... on why yet, but yeah, I've got that oh. to come. <laughs> That's something to look forward to. All right, question seven. If you could have any one superpower, what would you pick and why? Um, oh, well, right now I would um, be able to cure, cure, the, cure the disease that is blighting us all. Good answer. Uh, question eight. What job or occupation other than your own would you most like to attempt? Um, I think I would do a much better job at Prime Minister right now. 
I'm not going to go into that one. I, I've seen some <laughs> people who are obvi like very passionate about what's going on. I, I don't talk about politics because, A, I don't really know what I'm talking about, obviously in the UK, but B, also I know people get very worked up and you're told yeah. not to discuss politics. So I'll respect that mm -hmm. as your answer, but I'll leave well enough alone. Uh, I'm, not, I'm not going into that one, Natalie. I don't, ha I don't have time for that one. Question nine, what job or occupation other than your own would you definitely not like to attempt? I probably wouldn't want to be prime minister right now as well. <laughs> it's probably like that. <laughs> yeah, I I don't normally have much sympathy for politicians, but at the moment I, I'm feeling a little bit of it. Not not for all of them, but for some of them. Yeah. Anyway, final question: If heaven exists, what would you like to hear God say when you arrive at the pearly gates? Um, oh yes, I, I remember this will be the same answer that I had last time and it was you were a really good mum, you raised a really good son. I'm, I'm sure you will hear that. Uh, okay, let's run through quickly the final questions and then I'll let Natalie go. So now Claire Beebe has asked what advice do you have for someone returning to compete in Galaxy? Um, so I would say um, if you're returning, enter immediately. If you know you're going to return, you loved it, you, you know that that's what you want, enter quickly and enjoy the entire year. Because I um, entered my first galaxy with only nine, nine weeks to go um, and so didn't really have the time to enjoy the whole experience. It was just kind of like, like, what do I need to get? What do I need to do? I need to, like, I'm busy, busy. Whereas this time I was able to plan it. I enjoyed the full yeah. 10 months. I would say get out to appearances even when it is difficult and you are juggling your schedule and you're having to fit them in and you're having to plan get because get to them because it really enhances your experience you meet people mm. before you arrive so when you arrive it's better um, and it, you know it really adds to the whole experience um, and I would also say um, have a really good hard think about why you are entering a pageant mm. and why you are entering galaxy what know why you've entered what you want to get from it because then you can plan your 10 11 months run up to the competition knowing why you're in it and what you want to achieve um you know i think yeah just be honest to yourself about why why you're applying and then plan 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 you've got absolutely loads of time to plan get all your stuff nice and early i had everything in the house and um, in december and then i was just able to january february march i was able to just enjoy the run-up and enjoy every single second of it you, you say that but now i remember because i rewatched our interview last time your appearance forms you left them all to the last minute didn't you <laughs> Do you know what? It was after my interview with you, Adrian. You were the one that said, start doing your forms. And, and actually, that should be my tip. Do your forms as you go along. Don't do what Danielle did and be printing them off on the morning of the competition. <laughs> Sorry, Danielle, I'm joking. In fact, no, I'm not joking. Don't do that. But she was really stressed out. <laughs> I know, because I... I was going around with her trying to find the printer cable because she couldn't print off her printer because it was a network printer and couldn't work. So I know. <laughs> Do your forms as you go along. Okay. All right. Uh, now, Caitlin Marie Toll has asked, do you have any advice for someone competing in their first pageant? Yeah, I would say you need to just try and enjoy every second of it because you can get really caught up in the pressure and the sort of desire to win and, um, and then you lose the kind of just pure and utter enjoyment of being part of a pageant and of being on stage. Um, I would say as well, really get to understand the system that you're in make sure you understand um the rules the you know the appear do you you know do, is there bonus points for appearances um what is mm. an appearance um you know what rounds is that because you you would never believe in both the times i've done galaxy people have turned up with like the wrong outfits not knowing like what colors their opening number dress was supposed to be or um yeah so just totally understand what system you've entered what their ethos is um you can find out a lot about a system just by giving you know the website a really good read you know and with, yeah. with galaxy you know it's it's progressive it's all about all women it's all about embracing all women um so just yeah really get an understanding of the system that you're in and really desperately just try and enjoy every second because it comes and goes so quickly 
yeah I, I can imagine i mean that 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 point about researching your system and knowing your why i think those are two very very important points and i think uh, queens who've been through pageantry a couple of times know that but um newbies very often yeah they have no idea i've, I've talked to multiple uh, first time pageant competitors who basically had no idea what a pageant was they thought it was like a modeling competition mm -hmm. and then they found out it really wasn't uh okay so yeah, that, some that football was me adrian i didn't know what an appearance was i went to have a photo <laughs> shoot with charlotte clemmy because i'd seen on facebook that kaylee atkinson was doing a no makeup um campaign yeah. i went along to see charlotte clemmy and she was like oh have you not done this before what appearances are you doing and i was like what's an appearance and she was like girl we need to talk like i've got so much to tell you so i'm so thankful that i met her and i was like wow <laughs> Charlotte is a very good person to have in your corner and, and shout out to Charlotte as well because she's just uh, launched her website or relaunched her website so I think it's Charlotte Clemmy photographer so if you guys want to go check it out I know she's asking for feedback and a lot of you have already done it but yeah. um, she's an amazing woman now um, football trivia for you Nat Hannah Golding has said 30 years not Premier League but we have won league titles and she's yeah. saying that she dislikes you now <laughs> knew that about me hannah <laughs> <laughs> uh and then weirdly to finish off you have two people saying that you should well Nat, caitlin has said natalie for prime minister and megan goldberger has written nat pav for pm oh i like that thanks thanks guys <laughs> I, I don't have time right now though i'm a bit busy <laughs> <laughs> that's fair enough and um danielle has said pa ha ha drop me in it yeah of course that's that's what we yeah. do here and uh, Caitlin has said thank you for your answer. Okay, Natalie, look, thank you so much for your time. I know it's been difficult for a lot of us, but especially for yourself and your position, so appreciate it. Thank you, Noah. I, I thank you. It's really cheered me up being here. Thank you, everybody. Good. And uh, Hannah Golding has said this lockdown makes you forget. <laughs> I'll let you two argue about football. I'm going to go and check this amazing <laughs> Facebook group out and put down all the stuff that I want and hope someone feels sorry for me and buys it. You get loads uh, of stuff. If you get more stuff than me, I'm going to be annoyed. <laughs> I, I can't believe how guys are competitive, how competitive pageant world is. It's so amazing. I knew because yesterday I put up a thing about who's got the longest name. You won't believe how many girls messaged me going, can I count my middle names? Because then it's like, and I was like, oh my God, you guys just need to give it a rest. It's just the longest name. Yeah. Oh, and I want to be, can I be involved the next time you do the, um, the competition thing? I love that. I was at home. I was full on going for it. <laughs> We are, we are doing another one this Monday. I've sorted out the guests for that. I will get you in on the next one. I just need to decide a theme for it. It probably will be a Galaxy v Galaxy sort of thing. I, I was thinking, I mean, because you understand the football competition, I was thinking, how cool would it be if we could get it? Probably not Galaxy versus another system, because I think that's a very dangerous road to go down. But a Galaxy for, let's say, from a, uh, from the UK versus a Galaxy from another country, that could be very interesting. That would be good. That would be really I, good. I don't think it'd yeah. be Australia because that would be at 6 a.m. for Australia. But um, yeah. I, I, I will clue you in because we have some like international guests on the next one. So we could do that. So we will do it. Um, and uh, Natalie, when, when we get, uh, if you can tell me also the virtual, the Miss Virtual pageant, and I'll, yeah, I'll give everyone that. But Okay, I'm going to keep you on the line for a sec. I'm going to let the audience go. Thank everyone for watching. And uh, we will speak to you next time. Hey guys, it's Adrian again. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe and remember to head over to pageantlaunch.com and join the launch team for our pageant review site. All you need to do is put in your email address. Thanks and uh, speak to you next time.